Living in New York, where going to work means an hour-long subway ride, it's hard to find a lot of time for console games. And since my phone has trouble with texting, mobile gaming's out. So I find myself spending a lot of time with my 3DS instead. And I got a load of used games for it for Christmas, and when I listed them off to my friends on Skype, they had a very visceral reaction to one in particular, Paper Mario Sticker Star. I wasn't too surprised. When it came out years ago, I heard nothing but bad things about it. I mean, the, the critics didn't hate it, but all of my friends thought it was trash, and we're all highly successful critics and game designers. It was upsetting, since Paper Mario had been one of my favorite Nintendo series for over a decade. I put off playing it for a while, but eventually my curiosity got the best of me, and it became my subway game. And you know what? I see where they're coming from. Now that said, I did enjoy my time with it. I wouldn't call Sticker Star an outright bad game, it's more like a confused sequel. When you ask somebody what their issue with Sticker Star was, nine times out of ten they'll tell you the same thing. The stickers. Now more specifically, the way the stickers affect combat. Since stickers are the entire focal point of the game, this kind of blows. Now that said, there are a lot of great moments involving these stickers, especially when it comes to the way you interact with the world around you. And it's definitely not an idea that was doomed from the beginning. Playing through it, I got the same feeling that I got when playing Final Fantasy XIII. Here is a decent game caught between its own identity and the legacy of the games that came before it. Reading up on the development process, it turns out that the first handheld Paper Mario was developed by a team of mostly new developers, with guidance from some of the devs who made the series what it was. Initially, their plan was to go back to a more traditional RPG, after Super Paper Mario shook up the formula. However, when they initially showed the game to Miyamoto, he churned it down, calling it boring and telling them to make a big change. Well, they kinda did. The stickers permeate every aspect of the game. You use them for puzzles, exploration, and combat. Now, now the combat is the problem. There are two major issues with the sticker-based combat in Sticker Star, and they're really the only major flaws in an otherwise enjoyable game. The first issue is that every action you take in battle costs a sticker. You, know, you don't have your boots and hammer as default weapons like previous games. Instead, it's like fighting with nothing but items. If you want to jump, you need to spend a jump sticker. If you want to heal, you need to spend a mushroom sticker. You can easily replenish these stickers by finding them in the field or buying them in shops, but the real problem comes from how situational some of these stickers are. Say you run into a bunch of spiked enemies, but all you really have left are jump stickers. Now what do you do? This is most troublesome when it comes to the bosses. Most of the bosses have a ridiculous amount of health and are incredibly difficult to beat unless you use a certain sticker or combination of stickers that have some sort of special situational effect on the boss. There are well over 50 of these special thing stickers in the game that you get through various means, and they can take up a lot of the limited space in your sticker book. Say, for example, you get into a boss fight against a giant blooper. You had no idea this is what you'd be fighting, and you've been given no tips or hints about what sort of stickers you should be bringing into battle. You've got a few thing stickers, so you throw them at the boss to see what they do. But nothing! Even the fish hook, which, you know, seems appropriate, seems to do much, and you wind up getting demolished by this titan. You reload, run all the way back to town to spend coins buying different thing stickers because you don't want to take 20 minutes running all over the map to get them, then go all the way back to the boss to see if they work, they don't, and the whole thing starts over again. This is exactly what happened to me, if it wasn't clear. With several of the bosses in the game, there were strategies I had to look up because they weren't conveyed very well. And while trial and error gameplay isn't normally all that bad, Sticker Star's system only lets you have a handful of your tools with you at any time, making the process much more tedious than it needs to be. Now, I don't hate the idea of stickers being used in clever ways. For example, there's a Poke boss that you need to use the baseball bat on. I was able to figure that out by myself due to context clues. The figure takes place in a baseball stadium, his body is... balls... And, and then the big icy boss that you have to melt with an oven or a radiator is also pretty easy to figure out. But this blooper? You need to bring a sponge and use it right before he sprays you with poison. Then the poison will be sprayed back at the blooper and you'll get a huge advantage. Maybe I'm an idiot, but that, that didn't feel like very, you know, fair design to me. Or, you know, okay, uh, let's ignore the possibility that I'm an idiot by examining a scenario where it really wouldn't matter. The final fight with Bowser includes several stages, because this is a Nintendo game. In one of those stages, it's incredibly important that you have a couple raccoon tails on hand so you can knock some balls back at Bowser. Now, now in theory, this is fine. Like, once the attack happens the first time, you realize that yes, you should use the tail. The problem is, y you know, what if you don't have any tails? So that's a big issue, but it's compounded by a problem that I believe is even larger. 
When Sticker Star's dev team were told to make a big change, that big change wound up being removing pretty much anything that didn't have to do with the stickers. There's no experience, no special moves, no companions, just Mario and his stickers. Sure, it's a change, but in my opinion, a change for the worse. The battles are now pointless. What makes those constant battles in RPGs worthwhile is the sense of progression. You gain experience, you learn new moves, you get rewards for getting through each battle. In Sticker Star, Mario has no level, no sense of progression by himself. He just gets stronger stickers. Now while you can get some stickers from fighting, you mostly just get coins, and you can find both stickers and coins laying all over the map. In my playthrough, it didn't take very long before I was doing everything I could to avoid getting into fights because it was just a waste of time. A core part of the game, the combat, was nothing but annoying. There were a handful of other small problems, times when a puzzle was too obtuse or you just weren't sure where to go, but that happens with every game and I don't look at them quite the same way as these combat flaws. Whereas the former are issues with execution, the latter are issues in design. To put it simply, the game should not have had a combat system like this. It, it simply doesn't work. Now the standard response is to get rid of the sticker combat and bring back those elements that work so well in the Thousand Year Door. Keep the sticker puzzles, but drop them for combat. However, I would argue that the stronger choice lies in the other direction. I love what the stickers bring to the table. Sticker Star has some of the strongest puzzles I can recall from any Nintendo game in a long time. The writing is funny largely because the emphasis on stickers freshens up a lot of the dialogue and gives the characters something new to work with. The stickers also change the way that you see the world, just as effectively as the dimension flipping did in Super Paper Mario. There's so much that can be done with stickers as a focal point in a paper world, and I firmly believe that it was held back by the old games, not the other way around. This isn't to say that the old games are bad, far from it, they're nearly perfect titles, but Sticker Star is clearly a different kind of game, and much like Super Paper Mario, it sorely needed the freedom to run with its premise. What if, and bear with me, Sticker Star didn't have a combat system, at least not in the traditional sense. There would be obstacles with enemies, but instead of going into a take-turn battle, you would have to use the stickers to dispose of the enemies in clever ways. Something along the lines of those puzzle sequences in South Park The Stick of Truth. You know, but, but like, for kids. Boss encounters could vary between stealth segments, action sequences like Super Paper Mario, or pretty much anything involving paperizing and using the stickers to do things that you couldn't do in any other Paper Mario game. The problem wasn't the change. The problem was that the change didn't go far enough. The combat system was left dangling in the middle, conflicting with the design of a game it really had no business being in. Seeing as how they were new developers handling a beloved series, there was a serious fear of isolating the fanbase, and they wanted it to feel familiar. But when you introduce a new element to a series, there's a point where you cross a line and can't cling on to the old mechanics. Now Super Paper Mario realized this. Could you imagine if the gameplay had been broken up by take-turn battles in that scenario? Wouldn't it have jammed up the entire flow of the game? They introduced a significant new element to the series, and they allowed that element to have a ripple effect, changing all of the other elements until there was a brand new, cohesive entry in the franchise that felt fresh. Sticker Star is far from a bad game. The writing is funny, although the story is lackluster. The music is fantastic, and there's that standard Nintendo polish that just makes it feel nice to play. But it's also a game with design choices that just don't gel. And I would have loved to see the game that they would have made if they hadn't felt a need to stick to Paper Mario traditions. Of course, we love to feel the heart of the series we love carry through each installment, but change is a great and sometimes necessary thing. At the end of the day, you want a game where all of the elements work together. Sometimes that means picking apart each aspect of its design and allowing it to change, until you have something wildly different. Sometimes, fans don't know what they want until you show them. We're paying you more than a few guild. You best be worth it. Look, I don't care about your politics. Well, I mean, that's... That's different. Hey guys, it's Chris. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'm sorry it's been so long since the last real video. Um, I, I was making a movie, and it's almost done now, and I'm excited to show you guys that. Um, and I will when it's time. Uh, but I've, I've got some more stuff coming to this channel. I've got two more Jackal Bites planned out. I'm working on... Uh, another really big video that I'm really excited about. Got some ideas for skits. I'm just excited to be working on this again. Uh, if you want to see any of my older work, here's some links to it. And hey, here's uh, here's Cyber Punch. Might as well throw that into everything. It's terrible. Go get drunk and watch it. It's go go get drunk. That's that's my catchphrase. Lord Jackal, go get drunk. I should probably sleep. It's it's uh, it's it's 1:15.